Hi there, my name is Raymond. I am a PharmD candidate for 2021, and in this video we will be talking about chlorothaladone. First, let's talk about counseling points for our patients. This medication is used to treat high blood pressure or to get rid of extra fluid in our body. It is taken once daily with food. This drug may cause you to urinate more frequently, so it's best to not take this medication close to bedtime to avoid having sleep problems. Drink lots of non-caffeinated liquids unless told by your doctor to drink less liquids. Take missed doses as soon as you remember. If it's close to the next dose, go ahead and skip that missed dose and take the medication at your normal time. Never take two doses together at the same time. Some common side effects include dizziness, tiredness or weakness, headache, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea or constipation, or a lack of appetite. Report to your doctor right away if you experience any of these more severe side effects, such as signs of allergic reactions, signs of fluid or electrolyte problems, which include mental changes, muscle pain or weakness, irregular heartbeat, passing out, or even seizures. Also report any signs of kidney problems, such as the inability to pass urine or large amounts of weight gain over time. Now let's go into more detail with chlorthalidone. It belongs to a class of thiazide-like diuretics and is indicated for the treatment of hypertension and edema. Studies have shown better evidence that favors chlorthalidone over hydrochlorothiazide and may be preferred in some clinicians when prescribing. Chlorthalidone was shown to have higher potency, a longer duration of action, and a greater risk reduction of cardiovascular events when compared to hydrochlorothiazide. Chlorthalidone is identified in the Beers criteria, so use cautions in patients that are 65 and older due to syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion or hyponatremia. For its mechanism of action, chlorthalidone inhibits the sodium and chloride symporter in the distal convoluted tubules in the kidney. This increases the excretion of sodium and chloride and thereby increases water excretion. As extra water is excreted out, this decreases cardiac output and the blood pressure. Chlorthalidone is supplied in 25 and 50 mg tablets. The recommended dose for hypertension is 12.5 to 25 mg once daily, and the recommended dose for edema is 12.5 to 25 mg once daily or as needed. Note that the smallest tablet for chlorthalidone is formulated in a 25 mg tablet, so to be able to achieve a 12.5 mg dose, those 25 mg tablets must be cut in half. The maximum daily dose for chlorthalidone is 100 mg per day. However, doses higher than 25 mg a day may result in greater adverse effects with a minimal added antihypertensive benefit. The manufacturer's labeling has no renal or hepatic dose adjustments, but thiazide diuretics are not effective when the creatinine clearance is below 30 mL per minute. It's recommended to avoid use when the creatinine clearance is below 10 mL per minute. Warnings include electrolyte disturbances such as hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hyponatremia, and hypercalcemia. In some patients, gout may also be precipitated. Use caution in severe renal disease and impaired hepatic function. Contraindications to this medication includes hypersensitivity to chlorthalidone or any components of its formulation, or patients who are allergic to other sulfa drugs. Another contraindication includes anuria. Some adverse reactions include hypotension, dizziness, GI upset, headache, photosensitivity, rash, hyperglycemia, and hyperuricemia. Patients who are currently on chlorthalidone should be monitored for blood pressure to ensure that they are at their treatment goals and that they are not hypotensive. Serum electrolytes due to the nature of the medication being able to disrupt electrolyte balances, renal function for safety, and weight and fluid status due to the extra water excretion.